Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Cosmic Howling Media, December 1st, 2020. Just like to start off uh, with reading a quote from Sidney Powell. Sidney Powell, quote, it's really the most massive and historical egregious fraud the world has ever seen. There it is. The lady, a the goddess light warrior. Uh, there it is, man. Exactly. This is a world uh, crime spree going on here. So hats off to uh, all the uh, light forces in the United States of America, like uh, Sidney Powell, General Flynn, and uh, General uh, McKierney, etc. cetera. Uh, they're doing so much excellent work. And all the light forces everywhere in all the countries, of course, and all light forces at all levels. It's really, everything's coming together now. Uh, uh, it's really hit the fan, obviously. And, uh, but I just wanted to um, read that quote because what's happening in the United States right now is potentially, uh, and looks very promising that uh, it'll really open this world up for everyone in all countries, including to uh, the day comes when uh, fair and just elections can be held in each country. No more election rigging, all this kind of stuff. Um, so hats off to uh, light forces everywhere. Uh, as the uh, battle rages on, uh, the war is going to be over soon. Uh, and uh, many uh, things point to that. At the same time, we're right in it now, obviously. Eh? Uh, so uh, hats off to everybody who uh, has care and concern for others and uh, is interested in the fair and just process. Um, basically, um, it looks very, uh, very good. Looks very, very good. Uh, the uh, we, the light forces, will have uh, complete control of the surface here. Looks like uh, it's not going to take a lot, uh, much longer now, because uh, as far as uh, what's more and more indicating um, is the uh, military positive forces, military Earth surface based, if you will, sort of, you know, uh, the official militaries of our world uh, of all the countries. Uh, are really, uh, I would say that uh, the positive forces of the military here on the Earth's surface uh, have the, uh, have the, certainly have the upper hand, and also uh, they're chiefly in control, if you will, but there's, there's, the, the war's hot, and there's all kinds of stuff going on at, at various levels, of course, so um Hats off to, uh, I would describe what's happening now as the United States of America Armed Forces, uh, light forces, uh, positive forces of uh, that very large military, obviously is leading the way in, in regards to the world military positive forces in play uh, that are really uh, taking down the, uh, the criminals, uh, the dark forces uh, at various levels. Um, and so that's, uh, that's really, uh, we're really starting to see it happen more and more now. It is really happening for sure. So I see that as that. The uh, United States Armed Forces is leading this. And there's many nations of uh, positive uh, militaries from many nations, including here in Canada, that are involved in that as well. So hats off to everybody. And they know there's many uh, military veterans walking your surface uh, and uh, they know that uh, many of us are uh, patriots of our countries and of humanity that uh, would, uh, will certainly uh, do what's necessary to help as well. So there's lots of great positive forces of all sorts in play. Uh, light warriors, light workers of all sorts. And I, I, I would figure we're all sort of, you know, combinations of those, eh? Uh, light forces, soldiers of all sorts, uh, as I'd like to say, using soldier as a very general term, if you will. So anyways, um, that's really good to see. Uh, and what, the, uh, what General Flynn and General uh, McKierney has uh, spoken recently uh, in the last couple of days, things they've said is quite profound. Uh, uh, as uh, you know, in regards to, we can see that it's really going public now and, and the military white hats are really more and more taking the stage, et cetera, et cetera. So um, with that, it uh, looks good. We can really free everything up. Today, I'd like to um, free everything up for everybody and make just start building a much better uh, world for all the creatures that are here. Eh? Uh, because, of course, Mother Earth is home to many creatures. And uh, 
will make it better and better for all, uh, absolutely, including, uh, you know, the humans, of course. So uh, very exciting uh, that basically uh, at this point, it's, you know, it's undeniable that uh, uh, there's been massive criminal activities in regards to uh, uh, rigging the uh, recent election in the United States of America, which uh, is the heart of Atlantis, if you will, of the heart of the new Atlantis. The heart chakra of the new Atlantis is somewhere in the United States of America. Uh, I'm almost positive about that. I'm not sure exactly where. If I guessed, I'd say, you know, perhaps North Dakota or something, but I'm just guessing, eh? But yeah, uh, so that's, uh, you know, there's many, there's so much to this. Uh, we've came so far in so many ways too, since say the Magna Carta about what, 800 years ago. And then eventually that, uh, so many things happening ever since then that led to the birth of the United States of America and the Declaration of Rights and the United States Constitution and then other uh, nations with the best human rights uh, on the surface right now uh, were able to uh, birth in way other ways, but it's not quite the same. But like Canada here, we've got some of the, the, the most powerful, best human rights doctrines in place, like the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and our Canadian Constitution, the Canadian Labour Code, etc. in Australia and the European countries, etc., etc. Um, so, you know, like this is, it's, it's been an ongoing process for a long time. And really the Magna Carta was definitely huge. Um, that is, uh, you know, quite, there's, there's so much to this, uh, uh, this whole, uh, just the recent history. If we just go back there, 800 years or so and, and stuff that's gone on and going on. Uh, so we're close. It looks like we're, we're so close to uh, full liberation uh, entering into the age of Aquarius as uh, December 21, 2020 is perhaps will be uh, go down in history as the, uh, the actual official entrance into the age of Aquarius. Uh, certainly, uh, it looks like uh, if we're uh, looking at the astrological and the, uh, the astronomy uh, involved there, you know, it's written in the stars, all that. And I uh, just wanted to mention again the uh, December 21st, 2020 mass meditation. That's, uh, and there's, there's many, it's posted in many languages on Cobra's site. I'll, I'll always post Cobra's website below and uh, about that. So hopefully we're going we're gonna to get more and more, uh, have a really large uh, participation from the Earth's surface peoples here in this mass meditation. Because I just wanted to say it's very uh, critical and very uh, important, uh, the more of us on the surface meditate in these mass meditations, because we're on the surface, right? And those of us uh, that are basically light forces types, uh, we're holding the light quotient here. We're, we're also, you know, doing uh, fight, uh, striving to fight the good fight when necessary, all that kind of stuff in, in all sorts of ways, uh, you know. Uh, we're obviously not talking about, you know, physical, but, you know, that's obviously a major part of it as well, thanks to many great soldiers uh, who are uh, battling so hard right now, lots of special forces, etc. Um, and as well as, of course, uh, the Galactic Confederation uh, light forces and the resistance forces and, of course, the alliance, what people call the alliance, that's uh, certainly uh, uh, there's uh, when, you, when people speak of the alliance, uh, the, uh, we're speaking of uh, certainly uh, the secret space program, positive forces in play. And uh, they've got some very excellent advanced uh, craft weaponry, uh, um, uh, very well trained, all that kind of stuff. And so they're uh, they're doing all, all kinds of excellent works. Um, uh, you know, step by step, day by day, by day, day by day. And uh, the uh, meditations, uh, people meditating right now is having more and more profound effects. People going to church. Uh, I would propose that one reason why the cabal is focusing on trying to break up congregations going to church, you know, like so many people do. And there's so many positive forced church uh, groups that go and they really in the spirit of light and love and all that and they pray together and you know it's awesome and that's really helping basically uh, uh, diminish and neutralize all dark darker uh, forces darker anomalies darker life forces in play here it's all getting purged out 
So uh, that's just a little bit of my theory on why they're targeting churches. Whereas, oh yeah, go up to your uh, local box store and you know fill that whole store up and buy all uh, there. You know, while while entrepreneurs are you know getting run out of business, uh, trying to you know uh, maintain a nice shop that they have and that kind of thing. That's a whole other story in itself. Um, so the um, yeah, and at the same time, they're you know I know here in British Columbia, they're uh, uh, they've been doing that as well as various parts in the states, etc., other parts of Canada and other parts of the world, uh, literally uh, uh, taking measures to uh, strive to prevent these uh, congregations from coming together and you know having their ceremonies and uh, their service, uh, regardless uh, whichever uh, faith they might be part of because so much of that is very positive eh? and that's helped like i say so uh, that's just kind of a theory more than anything but so hats off to those who are praying and meditating right now on the surface uh awesome man i mean meditation uh in itself uh i finally got into it in the last like two and a half years or so and it's like wow it does so much uh it's so much benefits in so many ways including i mean uh, we get into enough deep meditation and stuff, we can actually start to age regress ourselves, stuff like that, eh? and open up to our uh, higher self more and uh, our memories and stuff. That's what's helping me getting my uh, secret space program uh, memories back is meditation. And I'll get into some other things that I, I figure have been helping me uh, to remember more. Uh, I'd like to share a fresh memory of uh, some uh, uh uh, some uh, what we call it would be called a uh, this most recent memory I got continued on for quite a long time uh, elusive dreaming type of uh, memory in this one uh, all the other memories so far were pretty uh, much more briefer this one went on and on and so I'd like to speak about that one uh, in regards to was another memory on Mars uh, working on Mars uh, in the uh, secret space program as more and more uh, the SSP veterans are getting memories back now, uh, as things are opening up the energetic uh, system here, uh, you know, quarantine's almost over all that. The, all the, uh, the primary anomaly is just about gone for sure. Um, the draconian fleet uh, has been decimated uh, all through the solar system here. Um, that's huge, of course. Uh, the Chimera, they've been battling hard. Uh, the Chimera forces, that's the top groups of the dark forces and you got the draconian uh, empire uh, and various types of draconians in, in that have been playing here uh as sort of the second uh tier of the dark forces that have been involved and uh including their the draconian human hybrids that are still in offices all over the world although many are clones now and stuff and you know uh every day now uh massive uh things are being uh, revealed publicly now. We're in really, uh, the disclosure is, is just going to speed up every second now, for sure, from all of us in all kinds of ways, including, like I say, uh, I'd like to share a memory I just had um, of uh, the SSP because uh, I think it's, uh, it's great that uh, more and more disclosure of that by SSP veterans is happening. Uh, we're not getting any, uh, you know, mass media, so to speak, uh, this and that. Uh, yet, when the time's right, uh, it'll be, uh, uh, it'll be, um, there'll be some spokespeople, SSP veterans, including that will uh, start to uh, uh, be able to uh, have platforms to get to reach much more people. And for now, we'll just keep chipping away at the stone, of course, as and hats off to all the SSP veterans that have been, uh, in some cases for several years now, uh, like uh, Captain Randy Kramer and uh, um, Jason Rice and um, uh, Fritz, uh, uh, Johan Fritz and his, uh, his friend uh, and brother from arms, uh, Johan Fritz and uh, Ted um, and uh, Penny Bradley and Ileana the Star Traveler and uh, Tony Rodriguez and uh, James Rink, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, you know, uh, hats off to all the SSP veterans uh, that are giving lots of testimony of all sorts and more and more helps. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of, including those folks, uh, and it's helping me get my memories back, too. Like, and it's just like, and oh, and I, I want to mention William Tompkins, too. 
uh, of course, uh, William Tompkins. Um, wow. William Tompkins, uh, he's uh, passed on uh, not that long ago, a few years ago now, I guess, maybe three years ago, tops at about 90, mid 90s. And so he was involved in secret space program way back, of course, eh? and a brilliant guy uh, who uh, certainly uh, contributed a lot uh, in the development of such, including uh, he... Uh, as he, uh, he's got some great testimonies online. Anybody you haven't heard of uh, or heard uh, um, of William Tompkins yet, check him out for sure. Uh, and like he said, he says, he designed spacecraft carriers uh, sometime way back, like uh, early 60s, maybe even earlier, that he was, you know, and presenting them. And then they, they and then he figures they, and they, they got built by, by the late 70s into the 80s those designs of spacecraft carriers were, were being built and commissioned uh, for the fleet, the fleets, the SSP fleets. Uh, so anyways, yeah, um, I just wanted to mention uh, also, so I'll speak on my uh, memory of, uh, of uh, another Mars memory I've had now, and then I'd like to get into uh, a little bit of uh, about the tachyon chambers that are more and more available on the Earth's surface and other a few other things here. Uh, now, the memory I just had of uh, was it was really like an uh, you know what we when we have elusive dreams. Uh, at the same time, it wasn't one where uh, I could really drive it a lot, so to speak. It was a memory elusive dream, if you will. It was you know, um, and I could see though it was the first time I had a one that lasted quite a while. Uh, it wasn't you know. And so things are opening up like these firewalls. Now, I don't understand the memory suppression um, technologies they use on us too much, but we're starting to learn more and more of that from more and more testimony, including from uh, just discovering uh, Johann Fritz and his buddy, Ted. They got some great uh, talks together and, and they've, uh, you know, they've done interviews with others as well, of course. And uh, because uh, Johan, Johan Fritz, yeah, he was, uh, he was like a, an old man on, on a spaceship, uh, uh, a spaceship, an SSP ship. He did really well, started off as an enlisted man, worked himself up to becoming an officer and eventually an XO and eventually a, a captain, an old man on a ship. Uh, and I think, yeah, I heard him the other day speak, uh, so, uh, you know, somewhat of, of that whole memory suppression and others. So there's some SSP veterans, like more of the intellects, if you will, um, sort of scientific and warrior class, especially like Fritz, you know, the guy's like a real, got that scientific mind, but, you know, he's obviously a great, great warrior uh, and stuff like that. Eh? So uh, there are more and more uh, testimonies on, on these technologies, and we're going to learn more and more about it. And eventually we'll get official disclosure on this stuff so we can really study it and get documents eh? when they get declassified and stuff man that's going to be really cool to really start to learn this stuff because this is a really advanced technology that uh you know we can really uh wow it's going to be uh, it's, it's going to be more and more uh really uh interesting and uh, helpful things for us all to learn that we're we uh when you know if we're interested in any kind of thing uh so uh this so i don't know i'm not sure how that uh, the memory suppression technology uh, I shouldn't really try to speak on that right now, but basically I'm thinking, yeah, there's definitely, you know, sort of like firewalls uh, built up. So you don't remember a eh? parts of your memory say uh, are, it's not really a wipe. I really, uh, I know they, they speak of it as a memory wipe when they bring us back uh, when we're sent back to earth. Uh, they, you know, memory wipe us, so to speak. And, but it's, uh, I don't really think it's, you know, not so-called wipe, although, you know, it's nothing wrong with calling it that it's a suppression, certainly, I think, but it's there. It's, a, we, we still, we have it. So I think these firewalls are starting to break down, so to speak, more and more like, uh, cracks in them. And so we're, I'm, I'm getting more and more, uh, memories back and perhaps, you know, a lot of people looks, look to be, uh, getting a lot of memories back. Um, so this one was that where, yeah, I was getting a, I was getting some good vivid uh, visuals and uh, audios, et cetera, 
and uh, you know of the landscape this time more uh, of a larger frame so to speak I was I was seeing and, and feeling and all that it was really so it was a it was the first time like I say it wasn't just sort of a more brief uh, memory and then it went on to another one in some cases uh, this one just sort of went on this scenario and it was at a fire school on Mars that's that's the uh, the setting here uh, the soldiers uh, going and, and doing their some fire school, right? I mean, it's the same thing here. Like uh, when I was in the Navy, of course, uh, uh, we go to fire school. And, you know, you got your initial fire school before you go on the ship, which is fair. It tends to be fairly extensive. Uh, it was, you know, it was uh, fire school was at least a week, maybe two weeks worth of uh, in the class and lots of... Uh, uh, fire and flood, I should say, damage control too. Like, cause you know, you learn, get some basic learning how to, uh, you know, uh, stop, a, uh, say you got a compartment on a ship that's flooding out to, you know, try to get it plugged if you can and get it isolated from the rest of the ship all that. And then of course the fire training, eh? simulating, uh, um, uh, uh, compartments on ships and stuff. And, you know, they, they light a fire and we go in with the hoses and, and uh, the teams, the fire teams, and we see we get put the fire out and, and learn how to how to do the, the right thing. And then it goes from there. And then you're, you know, and then on the ships, as anybody know that works on a ship, you're always doing drills. Certainly on the uh, Navy ships, uh, in, in the Canadian Navy ships anyways, doing a drill pretty well every day. Uh, fire, lots and lots of fire drills, eh? Uh, which is great because you got to keep it, you know, you got to keep uh, it fresh. So that when it does happen, boom, you're ready uh, as a team, as a fire team to go, eh? and uh, hopefully, you know, effectively uh, uh, put out that fire. Um, you know, uh, you're out, especially, especially of course, when you're out at sea, uh, it's it's up to the crew and uh, uh, and the equipment you got and your knowledge, your skills to get that fire out and get that uh, if there's a flood to get that stopped. So you know, you're not going to sink or uh, your ship's not going to you know. Uh, get uh, uh, the fire is not going to spread uh, through the ship and all that kind of stuff. So this was a fire school on Mars. Um, definitely on the, see, I'm not sure how many fire schools are on Mars, so to speak, but this was, uh, I'm thinking it was on uh, one of the Southern main bases uh, where they pro they must have a, a sort of main fire school, if you will. Or a couple of those main bases where they got boot camp and everything. From what I've heard, I'm just saying uh, uh, about the boot. There's a boot camp on uh, Ares Primus, I believe they call it. One of the first southern bases, big base. Uh, there's a colony there. Uh, of course, uh, it's all um, a lot of things going on there. Uh, and then another place. So I'm not sure where this base was. It was definitely on Mars. Could have been on one of the northern bases. Uh, there might be one up north. I'm, I'm sure there probably is a, a fire a fire school up north too, but I, I don't know for sure. But anyways, it was definitely on Mars. And uh, here's what basically just uh, to not ramble on too much here. Uh, the um, I was getting uh, I was I was uh, getting uh, lots of memories of this where basically we went through some uh, fire school training, the soldiers, and then it came to the instructors. Right. Including the officer in charge, he was sitting at a table and we're we're uh, at one point. Some of us are going in there and sitting down and having a, a little bit of a rap session after we've done some school, some training and that we all did very well. Like the soldiers basically just kind of ace this training. And, and it, it kind of was it was interesting, I found, because the, the officer was uh, and this was in the building it was in was like a, really just like a. Uh, uh, you know, an armory you'll see on the Earth's surface. A lot of those armories have very large open areas so that we can march in. And, and any of us in the military have uh, marched in those at times, eh? Uh, depending uh, where you are. If you're downtown city, uh, you know, you can't just march out in the street all the time or whatever. And, you know, the reserves uh, are involved as well as regular forces, depending where you're at. So, so this really open area where uh, the soldiers uh, can march uh like just like we do have on the surface here it was also that was the fire school as well that was like i say the uh it was about a three-story stone type building um that really reminded me of limestone here it was stone man so 
uh they've been uh that was the upper i don't remember what's below i'm sure there it went down below the earth like most of the facilities are below right but this was the top structure of about two three i'd say three stories because we were sitting outside at one time talking you know i'll get to that in a second but inside when we're inside the 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 the, the thing was the officer said I guess we, I guess this is too easy. We got, we made this uh, course too easy. You guys, ascent, uh, gals too, of course. There's lots of women that are uh, warriors too, of course. And, um, you know, so it just came up like that where, and then, so we kind of laughed, some of us, including myself. And I'll mention uh, another gentleman that I uh, now remember uh, working with up there. Uh, he's, he's known here uh, as a secret space program veteran who's been speaking giving testimonies for years um and i thought i knew him up there too and now this is this is uh telling me that i that i have and i do and as far as i can see he's he's, he's a brother and uh he's a friend and uh you know and uh we'll see though like i say i'll uh if this is not suitable for this gentleman what i'm gonna say soon here uh, and who he's beholden to and all that, they'll let me know, obviously, and I, I'll just leave it be then. But like I say, I'm just, uh, uh, this, this recent memory was, was a really expanded, uh, uh, you know, it's opening up more and more now. So, uh, basically, yeah, the officer, we kind of just laughed at that. I said, you know, Hey, what do you say? You know, we're, uh, we're good at what we do. And yeah, we caught on fast and, and a lot of us have already had fire school, you know, cause you get refreshers. And then, uh, uh, you know, for many reasons, we just did really well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, make it harder than whatever. But, you know, what for? Uh, you know, we, yeah, we want to be good, uh, a good fire team. And uh, if you figure you got to make it harder, make it harder than. We're just kind of laughing at that, though. That's, that's, that was this uh, memory I got. Eh? And then we're sitting outside later, uh, outside. And that's where I got a good look at the building. It's like three stories and it was only about, uh, the, the building was about uh, 300 feet long and about three stories. And then I'm guessing behind us was, we were in a court, but I don't know. I didn't really notice uh, or vis look or visualize what's behind us, but I can't see it. It, it, it might be, I'm just saying it, it might be buildings all around, which would make sense on Mars to me anyways, but that's not necessarily what it is. It was certainly the building I seen about 300 feet long and, uh, about um, uh, let's see, not 300 feet. I'd say 200 feet. Sorry, 200 feet long, and it was like lime. It remind me of limestone, uh, three stories, and uh, that's the building we're in when we were speaking to the officer for a while. He was just asking us see what we thought about you know, and he because he was wondering you know that you guys uh, this is too easy or whatever. Uh, it was good training, and you know, okay, well if we found it easy, good, you know, let's you know. So we kind of laughed at that, like I say, but outside then. Later on after that, we're sitting around, some of us who were on the course. And I'm sitting, look, watching the building, looking at the, towards the building. And the, uh, one of the gentlemen uh, sitting next to me, just over to the left, was Captain Randy Kramer. And uh, so that's what we were talking about. We were, we were basically laughing about that. I says, uh, yeah, yeah, make it harder than, I mean, what's, you know, uh, you know, we were just kind of laughing at that fact that they say, oh, I guess it's not hard enough for you guys, eh, or whatever, eh? it's like, yeah, believe me, you know, uh, SS being in the SSP, uh, you know, we know what hard's all about. I can guarantee you that. So, uh, but anyways, it was kind of a funny thing. Eh? And, and they, and, and as far as I can see, they kept that course the same in large part. They're always tweaking things like that too. You know, just, just like militaries here on the surface, you know, it's always changing too, expanding technologies brought in, you get better technologies, you find a better way to do something. Of course, other than that, you know, but that was kind of just a, it was, there was a, uh, I remember we, we got a pretty good laugh out of that. And that's when I was hanging out, uh, wrapping up with Captain Randy Kramer on Mars uh, at a, uh, at fire school. I'll leave it at that, folks. And uh, I had a really good uh, fe a feeling I knew uh, Randy. And now I, you know, that's the memories which speaking to me. So uh, that's the re most recent memory uh, going on. And I just like to get in now of things that can help us help our mind open up our mind and uh get more and more uh, what's maybe just cellular memory but now and and maybe break through more of these firewalls uh whatever this actual memory suppression technology 
see, we're great technology too. The human mind is an 11th dimensional operating system. So we can find ways around and bust through firewalls, which we're more and more doing now, especially with the energies opening up. Eh? And things we're doing, meditation is awesome for sure. And prayer, anybody you know, doing prayer and stuff. Uh, good real medicines, man. You know, stay away from these really uh, uh, things that lower our frequency levels. Uh, you know, like, you know, fluoride and toothpaste, all this, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that are, keeps us down. Right. Uh, you know, mainstream media, you know, uh, you know, uh, listening to, you know, BBC or CBC or ABC or whatever. It was like, Oh man, scary stuff. Eh? Uh, but anyways, so yeah, that's, uh, that was the most recent memory. And I just like to, uh, share on the screen here a little bit about tachyon healing chambers that now, um, for any who are not familiar with tachyon energy healing chambers, there's now about approximately 55 open to the public on the Earth's surface. Uh, there's several in the United States of America. There's a few up here in Canada now. Uh, there's a couple or so in Australia. There's lots in Europe and lots in Asia, and it's expanding. Eh? Like there's lots in Japan and Taiwan and mainland China, uh, et cetera. Eh? And uh, some other places too. So uh, I just like to go through that as far as uh, just to touch a little bit on Pleiadian technology um, uh, for today, and then I'll yeah I'd like to speak more on the Pleiadian Pleiadians again. Uh, like for example, I I've been wearing this for several years now. This is a Pleiadian receptor, and this the first model of this came out in the 1960s. Uh, you see the middle is a gemstone. You can pick whatever gemstone you like. I got the blue sapphire uh, myself. And this is, um, this is Palladian technology built into this. What this does, those of us who wear it, I wear it. And it's right around, you, you wear it right around your heart chakra, right? like this, right? You're wearing it right about here, right? Uh, this is about the good spot here. This is slightly lower, maybe. I even have it up here. The original uh, chain uh, I put a new chain on, which is slightly longer, but it, this is pretty good going. It's right close, to, very close uh, to lined up with the heart chakra. Not perfect, but it's there. Eh? So basically what this does is um, it's able to receive energy because of this special metallurgy uh, and the Pleiadian technology in, uh, involved. It's a little dish. It's got a curvature into it. And the, uh, uh, the special metallurgy has a lot to do with it as well. And it's tachyonized, uh, et cetera. I believe it's tachyonized. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so anyways, um, and the sapphire, what happens is this design and with the Palladian technology in it, it's able to, this gemstone, then with the gemstone in the middle, and there's a hole on the other side as well. See right in the middle where the gemstone is. And so you wear it like that around your heart chakra is excellent. And uh what it does basically is it's able to, the gemstone, because of this uh, advanced technology here, and they've gotten better over the decades too, since the 60s. These have advanced and got better and better uh, and as well. Eh? So it basically, the, it, it enables this gemstone to receive energy and in a scalar form and, and enter into your body, scalar energies, which is like awesome, man. Scalar energies, man, you know. Uh, in helping us in many ways, um, uh, that kind of thing. So uh, that's a real, you know, basic uh, rundown on it. I just want to mention thanks to Fred Bell, um, who is basically inv the inventor of this. He got some information from some groovy Palladians and developed this. And you can still buy these online. There's different versions of them. This is a pretty good one. This is like, uh, I think I paid, what, 750 American dollars for this about five years, five, six years ago. And I just love it, though. I, I just, I, you know, once in a while, you know, when I when I forget it, when I got to go to, you know, work or something uh, around here, you know, this, you know, this matrix room, these things, you know, we got to do if we, you know, don't want to be on the street or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when I forget it was once in a while, it's like, oh, what a drag, man, I forgot it. Eh? So anyways, um, and like I say, even, you know, just your own mind, if you believe and, and it's not just but you know, there's the, the, this is some technology. There. That's what I figure uh, uh, to know and others that you know, this is some real technology. I'm not saying it's going to, you know, uh, it's not the uh, the magic, uh, you know, it's not the uh, uh, 
uh, the cure all end all or whatever, but yeah, I, I love this anyways. Yeah. I, you know, uh, I wear, you know, wear it all the time and, uh, find it, have found it very helpful. Uh, just, you know, more and more of this energy, the scalar and being able to receive, uh, some scalar energy through it like that. Um, and, and that kind of thing. So that's, uh, thanks to Fred Bell. And like I say, it's on, uh, you can find it online, Pleiadian receptor. And, uh, definitely, uh, anybody interested uh, in checking out, uh, more of a description on what that is, the technology, uh, involved, that kind of thing. Eh? Hats off to Fred Bell. Yeah, man. Good stuff. And, um, so now I just like to go uh, read a little bit on the tachyon energy healing chambers, because as far as me remembering more and more now, including uh, in the last year, starting to remember SSP, had memories of uh, being in the SSP, was part of it was definitely I went to tachyon energy healing chambers probably eight times now, eight sessions, and I haven't been there for a while. I'd love to get back. I'd get some cash together in that, eh? I mean, it's not that they're even really expensive necessarily. Like, you know, it'll be different for whoever owns it. But, uh, you know, it tends to be very groovy people that have these tachyon energy healing chambers. Very, you know, uh, spiritual uh, people, if you will, that kind of thing. Um, so about eight sessions I've had so far in recent years. Uh, and I found that helpful to, you know, uh, that's, uh, but I'll read a little on it uh, here in a second. And that, and by meditating, beginning to be a meditator just in the last two and a half years, that's definitely helped a lot to open up the mind more and, and including start to actually have memories of the SS, my SSP experiences. And, uh, and then, of course, you know, taking uh, plenty of like, you know, real medicines, if you will. I'll get into a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, just about vitamins and stuff uh, in a bit here. Stuff that I take medicines for many years now that basically you don't get flus and colds. You know, other than about four years ago when uh, there was some kind of thing, it was a flu-like thing, and many people were uh, talking about it. I figure that was from the whatever chemtrail batches they were spraying uh, at that period, the dark forces, because it was, you know, I mean, it was, yeah. I, well, other than that, I, I haven't had flus and colds for, you know, 10, 10 or so years. Since, basically, since I started uh, practicing what's known as orthomolecular medicine, which is basically megadose vitamins, utilizing megadose vitamins and other nutrients to heal and cure uh, the body and help the mind and all that kind of stuff. Eh? Like lots of ascorbic acid, lots of nicotinic acid. That Those two combinations are awesome. Uh, we'll get into a little bit about that after. But I'd like to right now go to the tachyon energy healing uh, chambers about those on uh, Cobra site. Uh, let's see here. This one. Yeah, here we go. Desktop. Okay, this one. And now, let's see here. Uh, desktop. Okay, here it is. Here, yeah. Now, um, let's see here. Tachyons. Here it is. Here, yeah. Okay, here it is. Here, yeah. Now, Tachyon Healing Chambers. Okay, this is on uh, Cobra Portal 2012 website. This is on Cobra's site. It's the same uh, website, of course, that uh, anybody want to look into that mass meditation coming up in December 21. Uh, like I say, there's all sorts of uh, films on the meditation in up at least 27 languages, something like that. But here it is here, the Tachyon Healing Chamber. Pleiadians and other cosmic civilizations of light use tachyons of light. Oh, sorry. Pleiadians and other cosmic civilizations of light use tachyons as basic source of energy as hyperdrive energy source for their spaceships by creating hyperspace wormholes for healing information transmissions and for other purposes. Tachyon belt that represents the border between the entropic and syntropic universe is now surrounding our planet. High energy cosmic rays enter this solar system from interstellar space and carry tachyons with them. Some of these tachyons reach the surface of our planet through a hyperdimensional wormhole that we have created with a quartz oscillator crystal aboard Genesis 2 spacecraft. And these tachyons can be utilized in our tachyon healing chamber that we have deployed in cooperation with the Palladians. This special tachyon chamber enables the arrival of tachyons from higher dimensions into physical matter. Tachyons have an extraordinary healing and harmonizing effect. They can harmonize completely all energy fields that are a result of gravity, electromagnetic, magnetism and weak nuclear force. 
This reflects practically in multitude of ways. Tachyon energy harmonizes and enlivens the energy matrix, which shapes all matter and thus also our mental, emotional, etheric, and physical bodies. All this affects greatly our physical health and well-being. Since it harmonizes all electromagnetic emissions, it is also an excellent protection against all forms of electro smog. A healing session inside the tachyon chamber takes 20 minutes and has irreversible positive effects on all aspects of our being. Pleiadian tachyon healing chamber is custom made according to your specifications and can be used as most advanced healing technology for spas and healing centers. Price upon request, flexible financing plans available. Please allow three months for construction and delivery. Now, a planetary network of tachyon healing chambers is being built. You can now schedule tachyon healing chamber sessions worldwide. And then it has all the list of the, uh, the ones that have opened up now. North America, Europe, Asia, lots in Asia, and a few in Oceania, including Auckland, New Zealand, Canberra, uh, Australia. Uh, the ones in Canada are so far in British Columbia here. Uh, we've got uh, four of them on the coast or close to the coast here now. And then there's, uh, there's several in, uh, in the United States of America. And many, there's many in Europe uh, and Asia, like I say. So there's basically um, somewhere around 55 of them. Because about four years ago, say, four, five years ago tops, there was maybe a handful of these open. So this is thanks to Cobra, who is basically... film in the description box if anybody wants to check this out and i look forward to getting back uh, again to one i uh uh yeah i've had uh probably about eight sessions now mostly 20 minute sessions but i was even uh, this see this was written several years ago and so everything's evolving and expanding too and actually i was able to do a 40 minute session my most recent session which was now not last year sometime it was a good like year ago or something I've uh, been quite a while, maybe even a year, year to year and a half ago is the last time I had a session. And uh, I definitely want to get back and get some cash together. Uh, but uh, the uh, that 40 minute session is um, that 40 minute session I had was like, uh, wow, I, I just want to share about that one. Because after about 15 minutes in the tachyon chamber, and like I say, the lady uh, let me stay in for like 40 minutes, man. It was, it was cool, right? Eh? Uh, really cool lady, eh? And um, after about 50 minutes uh, meditating, get myself calm and focusing and, and just, uh, you know, doing that, all that kind of thing, eh? Uh, mostly, you know, meditation kind of thing. I actually, one of the main uh, crystals, there's a, like a crystal... Uh, there's, there's, it's definitely, you know, it's it, part of its crystal technology for sure, but sort of the uh, crystal on top of the superstructure, if you will, the capstan, the capstone crystal, uh, I'd like to call it, sort of right on top of you there, uh, this really groovy crystal. And I saw that after about 50 minutes, I could literally see that crystal as I was inhaling. Because a lot of times I'd have my eyes closed, but then sometimes I'd open my eyes too. I'd have that uh, after about 15 minutes when I got calm enough and breathing and into a, a, a deep enough meditative state. As I would inhale in, I watched that crystal. The ta it's like I could see the tachyons coming through that crystal. You know, it was like mind blowing. It all became white looking. It, the, the, the tachyons moving through the crystal and it was the crack. The crystal itself was got a whitish, went whitish. It's flowing through. And then when I exhaled, it went back to opaque looking type of crystal it was you know almost clear you know like opaque pretty well like a nice crystal uh that you can see through and everything eh? so that was you know just and there's many testimonies uh online as well about uh, people's experiences they're all unique in all kinds of experiences um of that even for example my lady went once 
And uh, she basically probably still doesn't really necessarily believe it, like in this technology or not. But she went once. And the next morning, I hear her singing all morning. I'm serious. Like, and that's the first time I heard my lady sing in 10 years, man. You know, and stuff. Because, you know, I played some music. I said, I was, I was saying for a few years, hey, man, you want to do a duet or something? And so she, so yeah, after, that's the first time I heard her sing in 10 years, man. The, the morning after she had uh, done a session in the uh, healing chamber. And I said it to her, too. I say, see, uh, this is the real juice, man. See, you're singing all morning. I heard you. Eh? And uh, so anyways, you know, Amy, I'm just saying, hey, we don't, it's not about believing, man. Just have a desire to heal. I think that's what Cobra said. Uh, or I heard that through, not from Cobra, but through someone else uh, that has a tachyon uh, center that I think she heard from Cobra or whatever. I'm not saying hers, but it makes sense either way. Uh, I said, yeah, just if you go to one of these, uh, yeah, you don't believe whatever you believe, believe. Uh, just, uh, but yeah, if you bring a desire to heal, man, you know, and stuff, eh? Uh, so anyways, uh, about the tachyon energy healing chambers, I found them very helpful. And uh, like I say, I, yeah, I want to get back, uh, get some cash together and go do some more sessions, man. Uh, other than that, I'd like to just speak a little on uh, some. Also, this is really helpful in uh, opening up our minds. Uh, this is a, uh, and I'll, po I'll post the, the Madison website. This is called lymphatic care, right? So if, if anybody has uh, a problem with their lymph system, like, uh, like um, it's there, maybe the, uh, one of the lymph nodes is not able to um, process the poisons, toxins uh, uh, very efficiently, as it, that you know, happens to us, eh? like in the case of me, the one on the bottom of our neck, uh, bottom, it'd be the right hand side of us on our neck. It's like right now, I can still feel a little bump. Um, but that was, I didn't even know what that was for years. It just kept growing and growing, got really big and then burst. It's like, wow, man. And I went to the hospital one time and they cut it out like, ah, but then it just grew all back. And I still didn't know what it is, eh? Or not, eh? So then, you know, I go online and within five minutes, I, uh, thanks to, uh, uh, the information available online. Oh, right. It's the lymph node there that needs some healing and nourishing. Otherwise it's just going to keep growing. And then I got to pop it every once in a while. It gets pretty painful by then. Eh? You got to, when it gets really big. So I started, I looked up and I found this and been taking this for about the last, oh, at least six years or so. Uh, this, and this is basically about 15, at least, um, um, herbs, you know, like, uh, uh, a little bit of flowers in there, branches and stuff, um, from, uh, Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine put together in capsules. And I'll send you the, uh, I'll put the link of this medicine site that has all sorts of, uh, what I, this, I love this medicine company. I've tried a couple other things, but it's a lot of it is, yeah, Chinese traditional medicine with some great, uh, Chinese traditional doctors that have came up with, uh, cocktails like this one to help us big time. So this is, uh, wow, this has helped me so much uh, that uh, I'll still get a somewhat of a growth. But as long as I take this, uh, it keeps that bay. Eh? And even a lot of times there's even no bump or anything. Eh? Whereas before, like I say, it just grows, grows and gets really big. And then it eventually comes pretty painful. You got to pop it. And, you know, it's, it's kind of hairy. Eh? Uh, so I'll post that link below. And that also helps us open up. I noticed that that helps us with our dreams or like, when, you know, your, it'll affect your dreams and everything. And uh, potentially your help your with your memories, all kinds of stuff, eh? Uh, there's a lot that be, can be said about that. And other than that, orthomolecular medicine, um, like these are this combination, say, this is C and D, or, you know, a lot of times I'll just have C, but of course, D, vitamin D is awesome, eh? Uh, but this this combination, nicotinic acid, niacin, and vitamin C, and of course, the vitamin D is awesome too. But just to speak a little bit of nicotinic acid and ascorbic acid, vitamin C, Large doses of that help your brain function big time, man. Uh, literally, uh, Abram Hoffer in 1952, he discovered that, uh, and uh, his first patient, he poured, uh, he got a liquid um, batch of vitamin, lots of vitamin C, lots of uh, uh, what's known as B3, nicotinic acid. It comes in three different forms, but uh, I, I, I usually take the nicotinic acid. There's a couple other forms of B3. So nicotinic acid and ascorbic acid, Abram Hoffer, Dr. Abram Hoffer, 
he's like the father of orthomolecular medicine, right? Uh, I'll post a, um, a link to his, uh, something of him speaking uh, uh, about that, if anybody's not familiar with Dr. Abram Hoffer, Canadian doctor, quite a story there. Um, so that, he poured his first patient, who was in an asylum that Abram was working in, back, this was 1952, and this uh, young patient, 20 some years old, was pretty well, ca almost totally catatomic and had been diagnosed with severe organic type schizophrenia, not the kind that from heavy mind control and stuff I'm talking. Uh, could have been some of that in play too, but basically it was, you know, the organic type, if you will, that can be, can is curable in, 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 in so many cases, uh, if you will. It it treatable, I should say, because you, this, you continue to take this uh anyways this is a the first success story and abram helped thousands of people literally uh with the, when with brain function problems depression uh schizophrenia probably the best doctor on the earth's surface ever to have helped many many people otherwise suffering with like severe schizophrenias where you know you just can't you know uh like i remember one schizophrenia per, a person suffering said it's like you know all these radio frequencies coming into my brain and stuff and but they're not uh you know it's like you're between you're a little bit between the uh uh the station like on our you know when you go with a dial on a radio and between it's zzz, all that static and everything distortions and everything you're not quite uh, uh tuned right in when then you tune in it gets nice and clear that's how well, one schizophrenia uh person suffering with schizophrenia has described it uh but anyway so uh, yeah, he poured down liquid uh, uh, scorbic acid, nicotinic acid into this patient who was uh, bedridden, pretty well written off at that time in the big asylum in Saskatchewan. The big old ones uh, where, you know, fire hose you off to clean you up or whatever, you know. And, you know, there's a lot to that story. Uh, you know, that's a whole other lots of stories as far as uh, those places. But uh, so anyways, within a couple of days, this uh, young man was sitting up. And then he could actually drink it himself. And so he, so Abram kept giving him large doses of uh, ascorbic acid, nicotinic, nicotinic acid. And that young man went on within three months or so, he was discharged from the asylum and went on to have a successful life, a family career, uh, did well for himself and maintained all through uh, uh, his life, uh, taking uh, lots of ascorbic acid and nicotinic acid. And it kept at bay uh, his otherwise very uh, severe uh, state of organic schizophrenia, if you will. So anyways, I just want to mention that. Also, uh, this, of course, uh, if anybody still hasn't heard of this, this is, this is thanks to uh, a United States Marine Corps veteran and a brilliant guy who's done so many uh, excellent things. Uh, is um, Jim Hummel. I'll post a link of him. This is this is the makings of chlorine dioxide, which is a weak oxygenator. If you if you mix drops of this and in, uh, into a water glass of water, stir it up, drink it. It's going to uh, go after pathogens in your body. It will. It's a soft, uh, a weak oxygenator, not like chlorine. Chlorine is a strong oxygenator which can be lethal, obviously, uh, especially in the more volatile states like gas. It'll take us out. You know, we're, we're done real fast. This is chlorine dioxide. So it's chlorine, but one more oxygen molecule in the chain. So it's it, it, it's it's amazing. That's why it's amazing. It will uh, we put that in. Our, and I've been taking this for uh, several years now, six, seven years since I heard of it. And it's helped me big time. I've done treatments of it. Uh, Jim Hummel's got a book on it. He's got it more and more down to an exact science. Of course, he's been demonized by Big Pharma as uh, so many great uh, healers and shaman, etc. Over time, uh, just anybody who you know cares uh, about people's health and their own health. So this, um, and you can actually make this. I haven't tried making. I'm going to start making it because it's it's not easy to get online, eh? Uh, they really because it's so demonized by uh, by the criminals who run our state medical systems. So this, um, yeah, it's a weak oxygenator. So it won't, it doesn't affect all our cells in our body that we need, the good ones, right? So that's a beautiful thing. That's a weak oxygenator, chlorine dioxide, um, uh, if any, just in case, because this, like I say, this is known, proven 
the cure malaria in most cases in two to four hours, for example. You want to talk about it? That's why uh, I can see why uh, Jim Humble called it miracle mineral solution, man. It's like, wow, man, you know, this will uh, cure all kinds of stuff. Like, for example, I used this one time when I, I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't, you know, I, I just basically want a person who's stayed away from state medical systems as much as possible and in large part fortunate to be able to, uh, you know, including uh, the dental, whatever. So I got to a point where, yeah, you know, I let my teeth go and my, you know, gum disease. It was like mental pain. And then I see Jimmy goes, yeah, brush. So I started brushing uh, with this stuff, chlorine dioxide. And it, 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 it for about almost uh, close to a year uh, before I finally went to the dentist, I knew I got to go. Eh? And I went, that's quite a story in itself, shopping and ending up four or five different dentists and uh, blah, blah, blah. Eh? That, you know, navigating through that friggin' system, eh? Uh, although there's some very skilled dentists, I appreciate the work that did get done. I just had to uh, really shop around and actually I uh, exposed one of them for, you know, uh, for something. Uh, they all know it, but, you know, it's like accountability. Uh, maybe not too much in that business. Eh? Uh, you know, as an engineer, uh, we make a mistake, uh, you know, and the machine breaks down and uh, or we cause a flood. Uh, you know, it's on us, which it should be. Right accountability you know that should be pretty standard basic we're not trying to you know go on a witch hunt with it, anybody either but uh yeah i brushed with it for a while and that and it really relieved the pain basically i i, I was i went for like well, three quarters of a year after that otherwise it was like intense uh, pain and everything and you know we should take care of our teeth of course so so i appreciate the uh uh the help from uh uh these dentists at the same time, but you know, I navigated through and that's, uh, that's quite a story in itself. You got, we all got to be careful what we say about these, uh, institutions, of course. Uh, but, uh, I see a future where, man, our state medical systems are going to become like excellent, man. You know what I mean? The, the shamans, man, the healers aren't going to be shut out anymore, man. Cause man, I guarantee you when I was a kid, man, I was, I said, I want to be a doctor, but even as a kid, I go, oh, is that it? So, you know, you stay away and, uh, you know, and then, uh, uh that's that kind of thing. Eh? Uh, but, uh, that's, uh, that's one of the, uh, that's perhaps the, you know, that's of the best things that's going to be happening now. And is it's, it's starting to break through is get to where, uh, starting to offer, uh, the people on mass, uh, real medicines, effective medicines, not without all these negative side effects. Really, really, wow, man, you know, brutally blah, blah, blah. You know, you read some of those, uh, sheets, of uh, these products uh, that they're uh, uh, that are being uh, administered to uh, our people's, you know, all sorts of, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, that, um, yeah, so that, yeah, as far as I, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't get flus or colds or whatever it is, whatever Corona type virus flu or whatever, uh, just by taking uh, some real medicine, eh? ortho molecular medicine practice, is is huge it'll help you so much and then uh these uh in, in the case of miracle mineral solution thanks to jimmy humble uh who just uh discovered that it cured malaria uh he discovered that a long time ago too uh that kind of thing so um yeah there was um something else i wanted to uh go through as well was uh oh yeah yeah let's see the um Oh, yeah, I want to speak a little bit on a uh, um, couple of military stories. When I was in the uh, Canadian Armed Forces, and uh, this sort of touches on a little bit of this stuff that uh, I think we can, hopefully we'll have more and more of an open dialogue on. And uh, it touches on a bit of, you know, uh, some of the serious issues, racism, um, uh, and just these institutions that are in place that uh, the way our people are processed in, in, in various ways, uh, various uh, incarceration centers, uh, various uh, psychiatric hospitals, uh, various uh, just the, 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 you know, the regular parts of the hospitals, um, the, um, uh, you know, of course, the whole transportation system we got here, we're going to revolutionize it all and make it all so much better. All the operating systems on the surface, uh, once we get uh, to the other side of this war, uh, when we, the light forces, take charge, that's what we do, you know, 
uh, we got to take a complete charge and, and take control here. Uh, cause as you can, anybody can see the dark forces are, they're the control freaks, man. They're the double tongues, you know, the two faces, all that, you know, smiling, uh, uh, you know, the smile, eh? that fake smile and everything, but, uh, it's all being revealed now. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to speak on the, uh, oh yes, a little uh, story on, uh, uh, I spent, uh, um, 60 days in the federal military stockade in Edmonton, Canada. And then I, I had spent a couple of weeks in base jail before that. Right. So military jail. And then I, uh, I went to military prison near the end of my two year stint, which was very uh, helpful to me. I learned a lot. I got in plenty of trouble, but you know, it was, and it, uh, I got friends uh, uh, that are more than friends from that brothers, you know, uh, like it's, it's awesome to be able to go see my brothers, uh, uh and speak to them and they just hang out with them have a meal whatever just you know wrap out and stuff it's it's great eh? uh so anyways i was in the military stockade and one of the things uh every night we all have to muster up and this is like 1985 into 86 is the period i was in we went through christmas and that was the best time to be in because christmas we had a friggin' full christmas dinner and uh, at that time you could still smoke cigarettes a lot of us were smoking cigarettes still and then, uh, so Christmas Day and then New Year's Day, we could smoke more than we could have smokes and we got to hang out for a while. So, you know what I mean? It was like, uh, if anything, yeah, I was glad I was in there. I had a couple of those days where we had more cigarettes and we were able to hang out together in the mess and wrap out. And, and like I say, they, they served us up a real nice Christmas dinner too, man. It was like, and even years before that, uh, in the stockade there, it was, it was already outlawed then, but. Uh, they used to even give uh, the uh, detainees and the prisoners a couple of beers with their Christmas dinner. How about that? Eh? So, you know, I mean, I'm just saying the way I the why I, I mentioned that is because you can see these societies becoming less human over time. Because eh? even in the federal military stockade at Christmas, they used to give us a couple of beers eh? and we we could smoke some extra cigarettes and wrap together, have more time to in, in, and enjoy a real a good, a real nice traditional Christmas dinner. Uh, and then more and more over time, you see these, you know, these, these things just, you know, no, take that away, take this away, you know, more isolation style prisons and all this. So anyways, quick story about that. Every night we, uh, we all have to muster up and read the fire orders, which is a good thing, right? What we're going to do if the fire alarm sounds after it lights out, right? And so we all have to learn that spiel uh, and, and we're, we, they, 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 they always have three or four or half a dozen of us, whatever it might be that night. Okay, you go out, you read the fire orders. So you, you march out into the middle of where uh, between the two main lines of, uh, of uh, prisoners. And there's, you know, the, uh, those taking, uh, those uh, that are in charge and they're the, the uh, prison guards, if you will, which are half soldier. Uh, well, they're all soldiers in a sense, which are half hard army uh, soldiers and the other half are military police that uh, were staffing it at that time, anyways. And that's quite a thing in itself to ex have experienced that. Uh, we're products of our training, our environment, because it was such a difference between the MPs and the uh, hard army soldiers that were in there. Uh, there's certainly some differences you can see, and it's not no slight on any individual or trade trade. Uh, uh to about that i'm just saying you could see we're products of our training our environment and, you know we're uh like the mps are there to do a job and the soldiers are there to do the job the same jobs but you could see where you know the difference there's quite a difference uh from when uh, i was really able to experience that in my time there i had a 60 day sentence i got out in 46 good time but anyways i found this is touching a little on a little of the things like Growing up in Canada, I grew up in Ottawa, Gatineau, and that's really English, French speaking, you know, right there, you know, Ottawa is very uh, multicultural, of course, like all the major cities in the United States and Canada, uh, and many languages are spoken, but the main languages are English and French, the main operating languages, I should say, right, on the streets, in the schools, etc. So I grew up with that where you know, and I, I, I grew up in, in Western Quebec and the city. I was fortunate. I grew up in the country and the city. So I grew up, hang out with my French Canadian family up there. 
and actually where there's a lot of Irish settlers. So my, and my mother's from there. So these people that often, so you'd hear English and French back and forth, very bilingual kind of part of uh, the world. A very, uh, you can, you know, literally, uh, uh, you can operate in both those languages. Eh? There's some places are like that, right? Or more, of course, you're the Europeans are very, uh, a lot of them are very linguistically skilled, like the, the Swiss and the Dutch, et cetera. Eh? Uh, they, you know, a lot of them speak many languages, you know, so they're very multi. But so this is, yeah, definitely a part of Canada where uh, in Ottawa too, Gatineau, and uh, there's some pockets that are predominantly French, some predominantly English speaking. Um and then, but there's pockets, there's lots of it where it's, you really, there's two operating languages. I even worked for public works for a while in a plant back there and where the engineers there, there was about half French Canadians, like mother tongue, French Canadian types, you know, because my, my, my mother tongue's English. I just taught myself French over the years uh, because I'm interested in it's, it's good for the brain to have, you know, speak more than one language all that. Plus in Canada, you know, it's a, it's a lot of people speak French and we hang out in Quebec. It's, it's, it's good to be able to speak French, of course. Eh? So uh, to make a long story short, uh, to grow up in that and see that, eh, there was definitely this, you know, uh, English, it was, I could say English speaking, French speaking, because it, 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 it's beyond that. It's more than just, you know, the French Canadians and the English Canadians, right? It's that too, but it's really English speaking French. But anyways, you know, uh, so that was where that kind of meets really there, eh? you know, always, so there was always lots of uh, uh, growing up there. There was always lots of tensions of that. And, you know, at times violence and all kinds of stuff, eh? prejudices, you know, uh, whatever. Eh? So, but growing up the way I did, I seen both were, I was in both, you know, I grew up, I grew up in the, uh, and hang around, you know, French Canadian families and including my own. And, and then, but we had, like I say, uh, a lot of the Irish settlers up there and they, uh, they would speak French too, but uh, basically they tended to uh, speak English coming off the farms. And uh, to this day, some of the older generations, you know, they had no, uh, they didn't uh, need to learn French. There was a, a large enough Irish community and uh, where, you know, they were, of course, there's a little bit of Gaelic going on there too, the actual Irish language, of course. So, uh, but anyways, this is uh, why I said, I said stuff like that was in the, in, in the military stockade one time, this French Canadian guy, uh, this one of the French Canadian guys uh, that was reading the fire orders, but he and there was another one too that were we all had to be really loud, right? But this guy somehow was extra loud, like it was so loud, and I was like, you know, laughing. We're all standing there, not laughing out loud, but I was just, oh, this is so funny, eh? And I was doing that more than once, but uh, what happened was, uh, and it wasn't because the guy was speaking French. I mean, like I say, I'm you know like whatever from French Canadian family, eh? And, uh, you know, I grew up with uh, hearing it and finally actually studied it and learned, learned uh, you know, I can sort of speak French poorly and understand it, uh, especially when you go back into uh, a place where there is French spoken, eh? French Canadian, I mean, like back where I come from, the dialect there. Uh, but anyways, um, the, uh, the sergeant on uh, duty that time was uh, a Vandu, World 22nd Regiment, which is the French Canadian speaking part of the army based in Quebec, uh, I believe Valcartre, et cetera, the Van Dues, as they're known. Uh, so he was like, just, just, you know, one of these excellent hard army, hardcore soldiers, say really, uh, you know, a tough, fierce warrior for sure. Right? Uh, I had a lot of respect for a lot of those uh, soldiers I met in there for sure. Um, so he, because they that in that particular case, I guess they had enough of me. This would been going on for a bit, and like I say, I wasn't laughing at the guy because he was speaking French. Because you could read the fire orders in English or French, right? Canada is officially, you know, a two language. Uh, French and English are the two, uh, two official languages. So some some people would read it in French. Some people would read it, would uh, uh, say it in English. Some people would say it in French, right? So he was saying in French. So he came up. And uh, of course, I got a French last name and whatever, eh? Um, uh, so whatever, you know, I'm, I'm out of like a French Canadian uh, uh, people, if you will. Uh, but a lot of us like French Canadians have, oh, just to make a, about French Canadians, you look at French Canadians, including Quebec, uh, so many of the Irish and French married each other, right? Eh? So there's so many French Canadians that have Irish in them 
and Irish Canadians that have French in them. And a lot to do with, of course, the church. It was okay. Uh, most of them were Catholics. So, okay, yeah, you can marry each other because you're Catholics or whatever. So, you know, that that's part of it too. Uh, but anyways, so in the stockade, um, yeah, the Van Du, they, they pulled me out and said, he said, Noel, you go out into the, uh, and you uh, say the fire orders now. And then the Sergeant Van Du, he goes to me, I pray for you. And uh, so I thought that was quite kindly of the, the Sergeant Van Du praying for me, eh? Because it was pretty critical that I got out there and properly did this and not started to laugh. Like one guy before that did, he couldn't, he was laughing too, uh, but he couldn't go out and, and say it. He got in trouble, but, you know, they kind of gave him a break. He was like a, uh, in this case, he was, a, uh, his mother tongue was French and he was, you know, so they knew he wasn't, you know, being uh, anti-French, so to speak. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, you know, you get, you know. So, but they figured I wasn't either, but like I say that, you know, this, this is all in play. It's, it's very subtle at times, but then it, sometimes it becomes a jackboot kind of thing at, uh, you know, when the shit hits the fan in various ways. So I lay out the uh, fire orders, blah, 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 went back and that, eh? And, um, and it was just one of those things where, yeah, that was, I was close to getting thrown in the hole actually, but you know, things you know what i mean there's a lot of things involved in you maybe getting to the other side of something and being okay or not and so that all played uh you know including that because i think the sergeant had a, a feeling it was this guy's laughing because he's speaking french and it wasn't that at all but he you know i could see why he would maybe think that may be the case but uh like i say i got a french last name whatever you know, i'm out of french canadian or whatever so uh, and then I seen, and I, oh, to just to add one more quick story, a guy I knew in the Navy, scrapper guy too, eh? He was a scrapper, man. And uh, real friggin' big heart, you know, big set of stones. Uh, you know, Irish Canadian guy, uh, as far as ethnicity, and you know, so you know, fighting Irish, all that. And he was kind of one of those guys, you know, uh, he said something to that same sergeant one time about French. Yeah, he says, you know. Uh, something it insulted uh, one of the Van Dus, I believe it was the sergeant, and he got thrown in the hole, anyways, for you know that kind of thing, eh? And uh, I knew that guy though, and from the East Coast, and uh, then I seen him in the stockade. I knew him when I was on the East Coast, then I, I seen him in the stockade a couple of years later, and I, it was, I was able to talk, get talking to him a couple of times at least uh, in the mess a little bit when we do get to wrap out a bit after uh, meal time. <laughs> Uh, or no, I don't know. Did we? Uh, yeah, no. Sometimes we'd able to actually speak to each other. Yeah. So he got thrown in a hole. But I'm just saying that that guy, he's, he's, he's good people. And it's just sort of the way it's that friggin' dance. Uh, I, I certainly wouldn't think of that guy as a racist. Uh, it's just, you know, in Canada, that's the way it's been, too. And but, you know, uh, and it's because a lot to do with language. Like when I grew up. Um, like I say, this guy, uh, this Irish Canadian guy, good, solid guy. Like it didn't, you know, because I grew up with that and sort of experienced both sides in uh, growing up in an English, predominantly English speaking uh, part of a neighborhood in the city, which lots of ethnicity, lots of my, like half my friends are, you know, Sicilian, Italian, Canadians, etc. So lots of, uh, but mostly all European uh, people from Europe that have came from Europe uh, and and had their children and, and settled in Canada, eh? like lots of Italian uh, Canadians, uh, lots of Irish Canadians, lots of English Canadians, lots of Scottish Canadians, uh, but very European, that, that whole neighborhood eh? uh, at that point, at that stage. Eh? And uh, so um, in Polish Canadians, etc. Eh? So uh, the, um, um, yeah, so growing up with that, you kind of get used to it. I'd see sort of both sides of it, and you just kind of, I just stay neutral because you know, uh, you know, I'm not really, uh, uh, you know, I never, I, I like, I like just like people uh, that are respectful, uh, regardless of what language they speak or you know what they look like or something. Eh? Uh, respectful, kind people are wow. It's you know nice being around people like that, regardless of what they look like or what language they speak. Eh? So, anyways. Um, they um uh this um oh yeah that yeah that gentleman uh yeah he uh that's basically you know the just kind of that kind of a thing that goes on sometimes uh and it plays out you know it plays out uh as it does and uh but oh i just want to mention 
uh, when I went back to Ottawa Gatineau area, for example, more and more of the younger generations are in large part bilingual now. And I noticed there's much less of a, that barrier other than the older groups, say. Eh? There's still that, you know, like people my age, I'm close to six years old and, and, and older. Uh, and, you know, uh, there was still that uh, thing going on. But I noticed the younger people, I didn't, I, I found, because uh, uh, in that area, it makes sense to learn at least those two languages. You can, you know, help you get government jobs and everything to be, uh, be able to read and write in English and French. So, uh, uh, you know, that, that I think, I think the, the language that really helped uh, bring a lot of those barriers down, bring a lot of those tensions down just by the younger generations having, uh, uh, being much more bilingual, that kind of thing. Eh? And uh, so that, that, that I found, uh, you know, it's an ongoing uh, process that we can really start to rid ourselves of these, it's really ignorance based on ignorance and fear and uh, that kind of thing. And, and really, uh, uh, we can utilize technologies for that matter, as there's more and more technologies that can, you know, translators and stuff, they eh? translate, uh, uh, like uh, translator uh, technologies they use in the SSP, et cetera. You know, we're, I have access to all that soon, so there'll be less and less of these barriers that way that can maybe frustrate people in, at times. And, you know, there's gonna be a problem or, uh, uh, something like that. Uh, there's there's problems that we we can easily solve a lot of this stuff, eh? And uh, uh, you know, get more and more to the heart of the matter, so to speak. Uh, so, anyways, the um, that was a uh, you know, it's ongoing. The um, um, the thing is about that whole uh, experience is just that the um, um. Like I remember, you know, you remember some things. I just want to mention, I'll mention one more thing about the stockade. I got marched out by a Corporal Van Du. And to me, that was important. I was so grateful that that Van Du, where I, I got a lot of respect for, you know, it was one of those Van Dus. His father was a Van Du. His grandfather was a Van Du. And, uh, uh, you know, excellent soldier. Really, like a guy, you know, I don't want to, you guy you wouldn't want to really mess with, you know, like just that good, solid, hardcore uh, warrior soldier. He marched me out of there, eh? and you know, to, for me, that's that was. Uh, I was glad he marched me out, not a, an MP. I'm just being honest, like, because uh, uh, you know, uh, that 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 was important to me. I mean, I, I understand it wasn't important to anybody else, but you know, things like this, eh? What matters to me? What matters to you? What is important to you uh, does not have to be important to someone else, you know. So these things, um, the uh, marching hard in the stockade, getting out early, getting. Uh, a third, a third of my sentence chopped off. That was important. I had to, sh for myself, not just, uh, you know, to see, uh, am I any good actually? Okay, let's, uh, or whatever, like, or, you know, uh, can I do this dance, this uh, sort of special training that goes on there? That's what I look at it as. Um, and so, yeah, I did well there, you know? So that, I mean, I realized, whereas the thing is we can see, if we can think of things, these things don't have to harm us as much. Cause I remember going back after the stockade after, drinking myself out of the Canadian Armed Forces, basically, which I did, absolutely, you know, drunken, irresponsible, being late for work too much. I go back, I'm kind of semi-shunned, including from one of my, uh, uh, some people I've been close to, including a, a highly decorated combat veteran, older school guy, uh, but I could sort of sense that's okay. I didn't have, I didn't have any hard feelings of it. I could see that's the way society is and how, you know, uh, you know, I went back to Quebec and uh, one of my cousins goes, yeah, I heard you got kicked out of there, right? And all this, and I just said, yeah, yeah, for sure, man. You know, I mean, I, I, you know, so I was able to see it enough that, you know, I'm not going against my, uh, including my family that, uh, uh, even, you know, say, yeah, you're a friggin', you know, you're a burnout, whatever that's, or, you know, a washout and so I was a washout, eh? But you know what I mean? Like stay true to yourself, man. And I did, I really did it. Like, I, I guess I didn't really uh serve my country uh, so well by doing a lot of years in the armed forces uh but i served when i was there eh? and uh you know there's like a uh, 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 great experience eh? and especially uh, those of us who didn't have to go into any combat that kind of thing eh? oh one more thing about the uh the armed forces i'll mention now in my experience i'm in basic training in cornwallis second week basic training and, uh, you know, when we're all going in, 
coming out of PT, say, because you spend your day an hour and a half PT, an hour and a half in the pool, an hour and a half marching, learning drill, uh, classroom stuff, firearms, all kinds of stuff, eh? all kinds of really uh, uh, good stuff, really. Eh? Like, you know, especially you definitely run your ass off, you get in really good condition, physical condition. So I got out a bit late onto the line. And so it gets, gets everybody in trouble when one of us is late getting out of PT again, because I, I forgot where my locker was for a bit and it took me a while. And by the time I got changed and got out there, so I got us in a little bit of shit. We all did a couple, uh, you know, some push ups or something. Uh, and then this one guy from another squadron, he started coming on to me. He says, I'm going to watch you now. And I'm going to, uh, and this is a basic training second week, right? He says, I'm going to watch you, uh, and make sure you get, have your shit together, so to speak, and get out in the line because so you don't get us all in trouble. Okay. Fair enough. So I just sort of played that game and that went on for a couple of days to where even, uh, in my squad, uh, the guys brought it up uh, to our trainer, the master corporal said, Oh, Noel, he's, uh, this guy's shadowing him. And he's, he's basically, uh, you know, he's bothering Noel here. Uh, and I hadn't said anything to the guy up to land. I just was going along with it. Right. Cause I was figuring maybe he'll stop this and we'll just get out, carry on. I, you know, I made a mistake. Okay. And that happens, uh, reasonably frequently a guy gets is late and we might, all of us might have to do a few push ups. you know, it's all part of the dance. eh? So this guy just was naive and didn't, you know, really know. Um, so anyways, after the, in the third day, he kept doing this. He's on to me. He's telling me, come on, hey, get out, go on. So then we're in mesh. We're in the mess hall lined up that day, and I call him out. So I go, okay, guy, let's dance, man. You obviously want to dance. Uh, you're messing with me, blah, blah, blah. Do it. Let's go. And then basically once I, you know, did that ugly dance, if you will, he backed right down, and I told him, you know, uh, don't ever bother me again, man, blah, blah, blah. And I never hardly ever see, it's like I never even seen that guy through the rest of basic training, right? He was on another squad room and he'd stay away from me and whatever. I, you know, I guess what happened after that, he went and complained about that, right? Because I, you know, basically I didn't threaten him though. You see, you got to watch what you say. Right? I didn't threaten him. I just said, yeah, obviously you want to dance. Let's go, man. You know, let's dance, eh? Uh, and then so, but that way I got him, you know, he stopped harassing me, which he was ready. Right? He just didn't know better, you know? A lightweight kind of guy and uh just learning like we all have to learn at times but i'm saying uh it's better him getting that maybe from me than a psychopath because you're out there you know you disrespect psychopaths out there and uh we know what happens there uh, it's been in the news uh you know it's in the news papers uh and the news broadcast day in day out all over the world right so the respect goes a long way uh uh in a lot of cases that's the way to fly. So, but yeah, at the same time, we're just naive. We don't know sometimes. So he basically, they were going to kick me out. The, is uh, psionically, I was seeing that, and and what I've been here, what are the things I was hearing, they were thinking, uh, like apparently, uh, I think the warrant, uh, if I'm not mistaken, basically say, yeah, get the guy, get him out of here. Like real, uh, uh, we we were trained with some really excellent soldiers. I was in the Navy, but we had a uh, we went in a platoon with Army and Navy recruits. And uh, our trainers and the warrants and the uh, sergeant major was all army. It was all hard army. Uh, we were in a hard army company. Um, uh, certainly the, the platoon, yeah, the whole company, I think, was all hard army because there's lots of Navy there and the Air Force, too. But usually you go through Navy. You get trained by uh, Navy uh, personnel if you're in, going to the Navy, but not always, right? So we had hardcore soldiers here, eh? these uh, RCR uh, like this uh, excellent sergeant who was uh, RCR for like 45 years, you know, I uh, spent like close to 45 years, that guy in uh, the armed forces. Um, so anyways, that's what it is. eh? like, I, you know, that's what it is. I almost got kicked out of basic training for that, but they didn't because, uh, and if they would have, say, I explained it to it, you know, my, my family probably wouldn't have uh, really been ex in acceptance of that. But to me, I felt that if they're going to kick me out for that, they knew what was going on. Said Avi, okay, you know what I mean. So I mean, me, stay true to yourself. It's not always easy, but that's kind of things that has helped me uh, still even be here. This is try to, yeah, it, it it doesn't, you know. Uh, they didn't kick me out, and uh, you know, I did really well uh, basic training. My uh, um, trainer, the master corporal, at one point near the end of basic training, said, as they're uh, uh, they were checking me out, say, say go do some marching. He sat in front of the other trainers and the sergeant and that. He says, uh, there's a uh, 
uh, there's a can something I forget his exact words. There's a good candidate for the Commandant Shield Award, which is like MVP of the platoon, which I did not win, and I, and I wasn't the, the MVP, but that I remember. And uh, uh, if that trainer hears this somehow, and and you know, uh, he I remember him saying it. Unless he's going to say, oh, you didn't say, it. but anyways, that you know that was that felt good. So yeah, I'm nearing my end of basic training, and even my. Uh, my trainer's saying, yeah, hey, what about him for MVP kind of thing, man? It's like, yeah. But anyways, the MVP, the Commandant Shield Award, that for that platoon went to a guy who was a sergeant in the reserves. Man, absolutely. He was like freaking already a really good soldier, right? He was just going regular force. He still had to go through the basic training to enter regular force like a lot of the reserve soldiers do and, and sailors, etc. cetera. Eh? They still got to go through the basic training, right? uh certainly then eh? so he yeah we the commandant shield was uh, you know the sergeant won that and he did like the sergeant for the reserves you know what i mean uh so it's ongoing you know what i mean like uh it's a flow uh, and uh i think what the military can help us is open up our mind and keep playing yes you know what i mean yes i'm a drunken fool uh there but step 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 there's you know you see what else went on is there you know uh it's in the details eh uh, it's all in the details, uh, and it's all uh, as now we're going to become more quantum as our minds opening up uh, with this uh, prison matrix ending. Uh, we could become cosmic grade humans again and quantum and all that. So, anyways, uh, just rambling on, folks. Uh, best wishes and victory of the light for light, to light, in light, uh, be light, sacred light. Salut, to the force lumière. Bravo, Zulu. To the soldat, the lumière. Yeah. Salut, mes amis.